So I thought I'd do a bit of a catch-all video to um, catch you up on how I've been progressing with the Blues Penny Whistle and of course in case you wanted to learn. Um, as you may know if you followed this channel, I started this a couple of years ago when I wanted to learn Blues Penny Whistle, but I've posted pretty inconsistently and I think it's, I've started to realise why there's some real obstacles I hit with trying to learn the Blues Penny Whistle uh, and I think I've started to push past them now. Um, or, you know, find the key to unlock what to do on the Blues Penny Whistle. So uh, I thought I'd, I'd share it with you all in one big long video. So let's get started. I'll play you a bit of the blues. Two, one, two, three. So, you know, there's something or other, and uh, blues in E mm, sometimes hit the major third, sometimes the minor third, sometimes in between, so not sure is it uh, major blues or minor blues. Uh, I was going for the C sharp on the A major, so uh, on the four chord I was hitting the major third most of the times. Um, and that's kind of the style I keep settling on. Um, and I think I've, I've figured out basically that <laughs> Really, this instrument wants to chirp. So when I was first kind of attracted to learning blues on the penny whistle, it was mainly because of its ability to slide and bend notes. So I was there thinking, can I play a lot of guitar riffs that um, are so natural on the guitar and they fall nicely on the tin whistle? And, and the answer is yes, yes they do that, they do that, that's true, but I think what I hadn't really understood and that I'm starting to come to understand now um, is that there are certain things that every instrument wants to do and uh, a lot of what the penny whistle, the tin whistle wants to do is available in the folk repertoire, so you know I had some time of exploring the folk ornaments, we're going to have a bit of kitten today by the way, Ugh, a bit of kitten today. Oh, are you a bluesy kitten? Interfering with the camera. Um, so, it, you know, it likes doing chirps. Uh, it likes doing rolls. So it likes those kinds of sounds. Um, and so, you know, where I was kind of trying to think, well, what, what uh, bluesy ideas can I put from other instruments onto the whistle? Um, I was getting stuck on trying to figure out what is it that the whistle really wants to do. All right, Flossie. Um, so let's look at another instrument for a moment. What about on the harmonica? Let's grab a harmonica. Great harmonica player, I'm learning. But one thing I notice is that just with one note, you can make a bluesy sound. because of the way you can put vibrato on that note. So with very, very simple, um, you know, with not many notes, very, very simple riffs, not very much note choice, uh, you, can, you can make pretty good sounds, but... Because you can't get that range of vibrato, um, you don't get that bluesy sound with just kind of trying to hold one note. Um, so it's really dictated by the instrument what it is that you're going to do. So one of the things I realised was if I try to incorporate stuff from my folk repertoire um, into um, a 12 bar blues, it worked much better. So, so let's say for example, a uh, good example is in A major. Um, there's the moon coin jig. You played that quite badly, I forgot the bit. But um, my point is, if I was playing a blues in A on this D whistle, um, I could incorporate that. I 
Okay, so the harmonica is naturally bluesy. Um, here it, here's a harmonica in A, and I can just play one note. And I folded it out into a chord there, but um, my point is you play that one note and immediately there's this blues. I'm not a great harmonica player. But I can already make a bluesy sound, and that's because you can take one note and really do, put a lot of vibrato on it, start to bend it around um, in that way. And you can bend on the whistle, but no matter how you try, that kind of vibrato just isn't available. What is available, though, is you know these chirping sounds. Um, and say we have the, the moon coin jig. And that's an A on a D whistle and um, you know I love that jig so can I incorporate those kind of chirps into an A blues uh, and yeah it works pretty well and so says the kitten. So yeah, I can do that. Another great one is Drowsy Maggie. Um, well, yeah, this is, these are examples of folk tunes, by the way, that include little uh, whistle-friendly things that sound great. Um, and so you can incorporate those into your blues. Drowsy Maggie is in E minor. And it's really that that I use quite a lot because that uh, contains notes from the blues scale. So I can go, typically in a turnaround, I could go <laughs> I'll do that again. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I can do that. Another great one is Drowsy Maggie. Um, well, yeah, this is, these are examples of folk tunes, by the way, that include little uh, whistle-friendly things that sound great. Um, and so you can incorporate those into your blues. Drowsy Maggie is in E minor. And it's really that that I use quite a lot because that uh, contains notes from the blues scale. So I can go, typically in a turnaround, I could go. <laughs> I'll do that again. So another reason I feel I haven't, you know, uh, done that much on this channel is because it, I do prefer to play the penny whistle out of doors because otherwise it really does make the cats meow, <laughs> doesn't it? It makes me meow. Um, right then, so that's a couple of things, you know, one thing is um, making sure that you pay attention to the kind of sounds the instrument wants to make, don't hold one note for a long time, instead do a lot more chirping, and then if you get stuck on that, you know, this is kind of what I learned, um, take parts from your folk repertoire, if that's where you've come from, and go, okay, well, the, in the world of folk, um, they've really explored this instrument and discovered what kinds of sounds it likes to make, what falls under the fingers, what's easy to play, and what feels natural to play. Um, and then you can go ahead and, and do that. Um, then there's also really kind of the question around positions and keys. So um, I think when I first started this, I just really wanted to work out how to play an E minor on a D whistle, um, or what I'm calling second position. Now I didn't know much about harmonicas at that point, and there are also diatonic instruments where you play blues, and there are position numbers. And just so you know, um, I've been understanding those positions kind of differently to how harmonica players do it. So if you play the harmonica, uh, say you're in C, first position is C. So the harmonica's in C, and you're playing a blues in C. Um, say that you want to play a blues in second position, which is the most common position used by harmonica players, I believe. That's not D. That's not one note up. It's actually up a whole fifth. So you go C, D, E, F, G. You're playing in G. 
Whereas I'm thinking of the whistle much more like a, a guitarist thinks of, of the, you know, the idea of position. So if you're looking at a piece of guitar music and you see the number five, normally Roman numeral number five, on the score, that means you play fret five. You go right up um, to fret five and that's where you're playing. It's, uh, you know, position one is fret one. Uh, open position is no fret. So I was kind of just... Um, Oh, sorry, no bar. So I was just sort of thinking of it the same way. So if this is um, this is a penny whistle in D, so the first position is where your keynote is D, all of the fingers down. I'm thinking of that. A second position, E minor, uh, where you know you're uncovering only one hole. It's the second second position you can find. Third position is almost useless. That would be playing an F sharp major or minor. Um, and third position would be G. Fourth position A fifth position B, and I think those are all the usable positions. Um, and in either of them you can play major or minor, but one is harder than the other, so, uh, you know, so for example, it falls very naturally under the fingers to play in D major, and a D whistle. But you can play in D minor. And I'm doing that by half holding, so it's harder to play in D minor, but you can do it. Uh, very nice to play in second position on a whistle, and that was really what I focused on for the bulk of the time. Um, and what I found was that when I was practicing um, out and about, uh, practicing in the street without a backing track, I really don't like backing tracks, so I, I like to practice either with people who are playing uh, some backing, or I like to practice by myself. Um, so I was practicing out and about, in the woods, on the street, um, and I was also playing with other people, and when it came to playing with other people, I was going, well, how do I always have the right whistle for the key that those people are going to want to play in? Um, and how do I work out that key before the song's over? <laughs> um, so I think there's another video on this that I did, but what I settled on was having whistles in these keys. So here are my whistles. Um, all generation whistles in E flat, D, C, B. I made a B whistle. There's a tutorial. Well, I, I don't know if it's a tutorial. Yes, I filmed myself doing it, so you might be able to tell how to do it. Um, and B flat. And um, with that, uh, in most of the comfortable positions, um, you can get pretty much all keys, and certainly all popular keys are pretty nearby. And um, so, for for example, E major comes up a lot with guitarists, and of course you can play that on your D whistle, because you can go E, and instead of playing the G natural right here, which is gives you E minor, you can half hold. So there you can play an E major. But it's, it's much more comfortable in 1, 2, 3, 4, fourth position. So when I made a, a B whistle, which gives me E major in fourth position, uh, that was a lot more comfortable to play. Um, but I sort of just generally found that, uh, like another challenge of playing at jams was that if I was going to a plugged in jam, like so, like a amplified jam, uh, I really like these generation whistles, but they weren't really loud enough. So I got some session whistles. Here's one in C. So I could play a nice uh, D minor blues on this in second position. Um, and that's much louder. <laughs> you probably could, I don't know if you could hear through um, the film, but it, it's much louder. And, and that get, gave me better opportunities plugged in, but they're more expensive and I could only afford two. So then I was a bit more limited as to which, which keys I could play in. Um, and, and then, yeah, the other problem was that quite often like fully acoustic jams were more folk and less blues. And the other issue I think that I was coming across was that because the whistle likes to chirp and play shorter notes, really, um, then I had a lot of problems with this um with this problem with the fact that m i think most people when they're learning blues they learn a straight blues like a traditional chicago blues you know so 
So they kind of like they learn something quite straight and quite pentatonic. Um, and actually, the whistle much better suited. So it does kind of fit, but it's a little bit too jazzy. And um, particularly, um, you know, little phrases like. kind of stuff it just didn't go down as well but it suits the whistle for me much better gives you that opportunity to play play longer uh, play shorter notes to chirp more um, to make wider note choices outside of uh, the, the pentatonic scale as long as those blues notes are in there as well um, and that made it tricky um, and then I think the other thing that I came up against was that really the lower keys of my high whistle, so I, know I never really play low whistle, um, that the lower keys aren't so easy to hear, um, like at a jam, you just really can't get the volume out and you might be in somebody else's um, pitch range as well. But really once you come down to something like a, a B flat whistle, um, maybe just play a C minor, You can blow much harder down the whistle, uh, it gives you more articulation choices, you're less likely to overblow, feels more bluesy to be able to really emphasise notes, and of course with a, a tiny little D whistle I was constantly feeling like I was holding back in terms of breath. Um, what can I play you on a, a B flat whistle? You see my just sort of demonstrate. Yeah, so there's something on a B flat whistle and also you notice that I went right up to which is my top B flat uh, which if I was on a D whistle would be a top D which you can reach but it's usually just too high for people and so it's quite nice to play on a B flat whistle but oftentimes I found when I was playing uh, with other people particularly at a live jam then I, I wasn't heard um, and I think all of this makes me feel like I still don't quite have the voice of the, the whistle uh, in blues yet. Yeah, I don't quite have it. I sort of feel like even as I'm playing for you now, I'm like, oh, do I? Or do I? Mm, can't quite figure it. Um, and I don't yet kind of feel quite comfortable with, with how I'm playing. Um, but what I might do is I might kind of play for you a bit more. Maybe I'll play you something um, in A major to kind of finish off. Uh, so that's one, two, three. That's fourth. One, two, three, four, fifth, fifth position. Fifth position on a D whistle. Um, maybe I'll play something that got that kind of feel to it. And by the way, one of the things I always loved, one of the reasons I wanted to do this, um, was because when I was a kid, I, you know, m the main live music I was hearing was buskers. And where I lived, like near Oxford, any time we'd go into Oxford, there was always a busker who was playing uh, a blues unaccompanied on the saxophone. And I thought it was magic. Um, so it's something I've always wanted to do, just that, that idea of... And he didn't even have a jingle, but he, he would just play. And, and I noticed, you know, throughout the time I've spent um, doing street art and, and busking myself and spending time with, with people who play on the streets, there's always somebody who can do this and I've really liked it and I've not been drawn to play saxophone myself <laughs> so let's try it on the penny whistle so I'm gonna um, maybe throw in some stuff from this A major or often played in A major A mixolydian um, real no hornpipe uh, redhead boy I'm gonna throw in a bit of the moon coin jig Um, and there's also an E in an A major blues, so I could, I 
could add in a bit of Drowsy Maggie. I'll see what I end up adding in. So I'm going to play a, a blues in A major. Uh, maybe a bit slower. About there. like my turnaround. Uh, let's try a more standard turnaround next time. So how about if I did the same kind of thing, but I didn't really think about my turnaround, um, but I could do um, major third of the E, and then major third of the D, down to the fifth. So let's try that, because I think my turnaround kind of just landed a bit dead. but I'm starting to get there. Yeah, so I think you can kind of see where I am at the moment. And I think that, you know, there's been all sorts of reasons why I haven't really updated on these videos. And I think that it's one of them is that I just still feel like I haven't mastered things, you know, stuff that comes really natural to me on the guitar or on other instruments like a turnaround, I just kind of completely miss um, on the whistle. And I've got to kind of find an understanding of, of what the whistle wants to do in those places instead of just watching the turnaround go by. Um, and I think it's really nice to spend time just with the whistle and a jingle to keep in time um, and, to, and to try and kind of get that voice on the whistle going. Um, and, and then it's sort of kind of clear that for me, because there have been sort of several obstacles to trying to play with other people, like I kind of arrive and I'm like, oh, I don't have the whistle in the right key or I do have a whistle in the right key, but, um, you know, not not the right, not a session whistle, just kind of one of my cheap ones that I like the sound of, but I haven't, uh, it hasn't got the volume to it to let me play with the band or, you know, whatever the issue is. Um, it's kind of like discouraged me from really going through and learning you know, all of my positions um, on the whistle and really understanding what it wants. But it's starting to get there. And I think to summarise, um, you know, what, what I've, where I started was, how can I get blues licks onto the whistle? Um, and that was fine, helps a little bit. Um, and then I went to sort of what kind of sounds does the whistle want to make? Chirping, really. There's a blues bird, you know, little tweeting blues bird. Um, and I think that's why there's a massive difference between the high whistle and the low whistle. If it wants to chirp, it's a high whistle. If you're down where it's really just a flute, you know, I've got a flute, so I, I personally would go for a, a flute if I'm going to go low. Um, and then uh, there's the kind of looking at what the whistle wants to do in terms of what it does when it's at home, which is usually in the world of folk. Uh, when the whistle's at home, it likes to do folk tunes. So why not incorporate bits of folk tunes into, um, yeah, in, in, into blues playing? And then I think the reason they get stuck and the reason they got stuck today is because there just aren't turn up. There aren't blues turnarounds, really. Um, in, in that folk repertoire. So we're trying to master that bit. I think that's the last kind of corner. Um, and, you know, if you're also learning or if you kind of already play the tin whistle um, and you're kind of decide to have a go at this, I'd love, I'd love to hear from you and see what you make of those turnarounds. Because for me, I think that's been the sticking point. Um, so, yeah, I think that's kind of a summary of what I've, where I am or what, what it is that I've been working on. And, you know, so, so many reasons why I haven't done a lot of videos makes the cats meow. <laughs> um, I don't really like making videos with backing tracks because I don't like working with them. So it, I, it's a lot of people making blues soloing uh, videos do that with backing tracks. So I've kind of gone, oh, yeah, well, I'll get around to doing one with a backing track. And then I just don't and then just don't make anything. Um, and yeah, I think that 
mm, I also the, the last problem as to why I haven't kind of made more videos is that there's nothing I feel like I've mastered. So there's nothing where I can kind of go, this is how you do this. <laughs> Uh, because none of it really, for me, feels like it's landed yet. Um, it's landed enough that people are interested in my playing and I'm enjoying doing it, but I haven't really landed on something that I feel like I can say is like a finished piece. Uh, here, try this, or you know, these licks are the best, or these are the ones to learn, because um, I just haven't, haven't got it. <laughs> um, but, you know, the question I wanted to answer when I um, started on this mission is, you know, first of all, can you play blues on a penny whistle? Yes, you can, absolutely. Can you play it on the cheapest one? That was somehow important to me because um, I sort of don't really believe in folk music's folk type. Well, not, not that this is folk, as in like trad folk, Irish folk, but um, I do, I do hope that blues is a music of the, of the ordinary people, not of the sort of conservatoire trained people. Um, that, that they can do it, they can pick it up, that it, they can afford to do it. So doing it on, on a cheap whistle um, was important. And yes, it can be done. In fact, I've got an untweaked one and I don't prefer them, but you can do it. You can do it on this is absolutely stock generation whistle in C. Uh, absolutely can do it um, and I think I've kind of answered those questions overall um, anything else you're kind of interested in um, about this do ask me a question and and I think finally you know um, the other thing that's just been a complete block has been that normally when you go to an instrument to learn something like learn the blues go to some great players and learn what they do transcribe what they do and there's so many reasons that that was irrelevant to the whistle first of all who's doing it um, second of all, people who were doing great blues solos on other instruments, it, just not the right thing for the whistle, what they were playing. Their vocab was didn't make any sense. Uh, doesn't make any sense. You try and play it on the whistle and it doesn't work. So that transcription process or process of listening to great players on your own instrument or any other instrument, it's just so far removed that um, I found that very, very difficult to do. There wasn't like a uh, player that I could recommend who I could mimic. Um, so that was kind of a dead stop. So, uh, you know, if you're out there and you're playing Blues Penny Whistle, get in touch and maybe we can um, share vocab. Anyway, um, it's it's been great fun. It's a great thing to do. I'll keep doing it. Maybe I'll get back to you <laughs> when I feel like I've mastered something. And, and thanks for watching. Oh, yeah. Um, I didn't mention extended techniques. So basically they are sing what you're playing. Um, and the other one is just um, roll your R. I'm very bad at doing this by the way roll an R there we go whilst playing a note works better in the higher octave Um, those are my two extended techniques. I mean, there is overblowing, but nobody likes to hear that on a whistle because it sends you up another octave or whatever, and it's already high enough. <laughs> um, so, but those two techniques, if you pull them out, they're, they're really great. Uh, and then the other one is two whistles at once. Um, um, not that great for blues, to be honest, um, because it's hard to get the notes you need, but... bit like that um it's ca can be kind of better if they're in complementary keys have i got any complementary keys b flat and e flat uh, that means we could play um in f i think um no flat F G A L B flat we're in B flat we can't be oh we are and woke up this morning at the belly was all blue well I woke up this morning
morning as the penny whistle blues. Not sure what I do for the other two chords. Uh, I, if I work it out, I'll make you a video about it. 